Our guest this morning is one of Sri Lanka's most well-known TV and radio personalities. He's here for a mission, and it's a great pleasure I'd like to introduce Vijay Korea in our studios this morning. Good morning and welcome to our program. Good morning, Derek. Good to be here with you. Vijay, will you briefly tell us uh, what's the purpose of your visit to Australia? The purpose of my visit is to share with uh, everyone, all humankind, the grace that I had and the life transforming experience that I had way back 36 years ago. All of us are born the way we are, but one day, one time, I realized that though I had name, gain, fame, one thing I lacked, inner peace, and the security that one must have for the future. Most of us have an insecurity of the future. That's because we don't know where we are going, what's going to happen, um, what will day after tomorrow bring, and so on. Then I happen to hear what is commonly called the gospel of the kingdom of God. Now, when you say God, immediately people close up because they think, ah, this man is going to talk about some religion or some religious yeah. affair. Mm -hmm. But it might pleasantly surprise you to know that God Almighty, the creator of all heaven and earth, who is a living being and spirit, never recommended for a human being a religion. But it was a, a call back to a relationship with him, where initially in the kingdom of God, in the Garden of Eden, he created a perfect man. Then he commanded the man, being in the kingdom of God, the paradise of God. But our first ancestor chose to do otherwise. He acted in self-will. God had warned him that in the day he does so, he would die. Mm -hmm. This occurred, Derek. But he lived 930 years. The death that occurred was the, s the life that God breathed into him. That is to say, after he was physical, taken out of the dust of the earth, God breathed the breath of life into him, and he became a living soul. So he had three dimensions, spiritual life, mental life, physical life. What died in him was the spiritual life. And that separated the man from fellowship with God who is spirit because he had no more spiritual life. The faculty was gone. Yeah. So now he was on his own. Plus, he was eking out the effects of what is called sin, the definition of sin being rebellion against the Almighty God, the Creator, His Word and His will. So here came a world of suffering, sickness, disease, poverty, lack, loneliness, fear, you name it. All the suffering, which was most beautifully analyzed by Siddhartha Gautama, the Buddha, the different kinds of suffering, dukkha, 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 viparinama, dukkha, yeah. and so on. But God had mercy and compassion and saw you and me coming in. And he sent his only begotten son, God incarnate in the flesh, 33 years sinless. He died, suffered, sinless, for the sinful, that's you and me. Yeah. Now, the purpose of that is to grant us the remission of our sins, a pardon of forgiveness. But it doesn't come by a mere confession, as some people imagine. Mm -hmm. It comes with a conscious decision to be unlike our first ancestor, and that is to come under the authority in obedience to the will which is conveyed in the Word of God. I had the grace to come to that place, Derek, one day. And I experienced the forgiveness of sins in that soon after, there was an inner peace and a joy in my heart which I could never explain. Mm -hmm. And I so continued in that fellowship, enjoying the benefits thereof, particularly knowing that if I hit the sword or went into my grave, the life I had now, which on account of forgiveness, alighted my dead soul to life, is eternal. At the end of the climactic uh, uh, end of this world system, yeah. uh, God promises a new heaven and a new earth, and that's the last thing in his revelation which he gives in, his, in scripture. A new heaven and a new earth, where there's no more death, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more tears, just like it was in the beginning when he created Adam. Yeah. And that's where, after the resurrection from the dead, and we put on a glorified spiritual body, we spent eternal life. Okay. Now, that's the focus for me, eternal life. And to get there, I need to continue in fellowship, in love, and in obedience 
to my God who by the birth of new life in my spirit has become my father. Mm. I am his child, spiritual child. Yes. But then you see, while you are here, there are challenges. It's not a bed of roses as some people try to make out, oh, you know, everything be tickety-boo. No, there are challenges because there's so much of evil around, so much of deception and temptation. And then if you have perchance some unrepented of sins, you still open a window and a door to some kind of quote-unquote suffering. Now in my case, three and a half years afterwards, I had a cancer come to me. I was flown to London, to Hampstead, to the Royal Free Hospital, because of the, in 84 there wasn't a scan machine yeah. in my developing country. Yeah. Um, there they did all of the tests and gave me only three months to live. That was the prognosis. But before I left Colombo, my home town, yeah. I talked to God and I said, I'm your son. Not a leaf falls without your knowledge. Then why did you permit this? How come? And then immediately he took me down memory lane to years gone by and to unrepented of sins, a relationship with an uncle of mine. I said, I have forgotten him. I have nothing. He says, no. Doesn't my word say man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God? Mm -hmm. My word says, if you are brother out against you and you bring a gift to the altar, leave your gift behind. Be reconciled with him and then come and offer the gift. I understood. I repented of that. And when I met my uncle after I was back in Colombo, the first thing I did was to embrace him. He cried, I cried, and we were reconciled for the rest of time. Mm. Similarly, he sh you might want to laugh, but you know, today we have a computer with a silicone chip which records millions of bits of information and a single command, you can call it up. Yeah. Almighty God knows it all. He asked me on that hospital bed at St. Michael's Nursing Home, room 28, what was that income tax return you filed just about two years and ni uh, nine months ago? That was the year I earned the most as a compere, mm -hmm. but my return showed only half. Now, why would I as a cancer patient in a hospital ever think of income tax or that awful building called the income tax yeah, department? Yeah. But the omniscient God reminded me, does not my word say, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's and unto God that which is God's? Mm -hmm. I repented of that. Confession yeah. is admission, but repentance is walking out of it. I came back from London. I went to the eighth floor of the Inland Revenue Department, and I said, I made a mistake. The assessor laughed, and he lovingly put all the surcharges on me. I agreed to pay. I came downstairs, took the key out of my car po uh, pocket of my shirt to get into the car laughing. Laughing at myself, because formerly if I had to pay 50 cents extra to that department, I'd have grit my teeth. But this time, Derek, I had such joy in my heart because I knew I was pleading the Father heart of God. Yeah. What's all this about? It's a relationship. But the main thing is, when they told me to be in London for three months, and that they would start me on with chemotherapy, nine courses, one week down the line yeah. uh, in the weekend, it did not become necessary. I was not in London for three months. I went on the 4th of April, 1984. I came back on the 17th of May, completely healed. No chemotherapy, no radiotherapy. I haven't had a tablet in medication for the treatment of that cancer. It's a perfectly medically attested miracle, if you want to call it that. I call it the supernatural grace, love, and divine intervention of God in my life. And you are looking at a miracle because they gave me three months. That was the prognosis. I had it on my system for one and a half years. But my trousers were dropping off my waist at that time. But is that the uh, strong faith? Is, is that something to do with it? Faith in what? In mm -hmm. God. How do you have faith in God? Only by what he has spoken. Yeah. How can you have faith in me if I told you nothing? If I gave you my word and said, Derek, I'll see you at the junction day after tomorrow at 10 o'clock, then you believe me. And when you come there, you find me. Yeah. So seeing is not believing. Believing is seeing. Same. See? Man must live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's what, how you have faith. How can you have faith in someone you've never seen? But you can have faith in someone who's spoken to you yeah. and given you a word and a promise. And that transformed my life. I have security, I have inner peace, I have joy, and I know where I am going when I am no more physical and mental. Mm -hmm. I've got spiritual life. It is eternal. One day I'll be resurrected to put on a glorified spiritual body just like Christ did at his resurrection. 
And because of his suffering, his broken body, his shed blood, I had all these benefits. And ultimately, I will be face to face with God. Because Revelation, the last, uh, one before the last chapter, 21 verse 4 says, The tabernacle of God is with man. He will dwell with them. They will be his people. He will be their God. It's just like when he created Adam. Yeah. So kingdom of God in the beginning, kingdom of God in the end. That's why he taught his disciples to pray, Thy kingdom come. That will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. So that's where I'm going to spend eternity. And when I think of it, I, I thank God and I feel so good. And I don't want to hurt the Father, Father heart of God in yeah. any way because he has so loved me. We love him because he first loved us. And I'm speaking like this, Derek, only because the Christ is not, as we have made him out to be, a Christian God or a God belonging to a Christian religion. Mm -hmm. He is the incarnation of the Creator who is spirit for all mankind. Glad yeah. tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. Mm. Besides, as I said at the beginning and I stopped there, God never recommended a religion for any human being. Mm. He never gave us the Christian religion. He gave us Christ. And yeah. what did Christ come to give us? By his own words recorded in John chapter 10 verse 10, I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. So I have come here to answer your question, to allow any human being to know that there is an abundant life provided they are willing to be, cease to be the Lord and God of their lives and to receive the Almighty God, who is Spirit, as Lord, as authority, as supreme in every area of their lives because the Christ has become the way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. John 14, 6. Why? Because an unholy man cannot enter into the holy presence of God unless he cleanses him from sin. Yeah. And he's the Lamb of God that took away our sins. But to take away our sins, religion doesn't do it. Someone putting some water on your head doesn't do it. Mm -hmm. You have to make a conscious decision. Yeah. To repent from sin, that word comes from the Greek word metanoia, mm. which is a turning away from, a renewal of the mind, a change of heart, yeah. a forsaking of your former ways for him. Because his ways are not our ways, his thoughts are not our thoughts, yeah. but he's conveyed them to us, yeah. that we may walk in them and live in them. The word of God is the light unto our path and a lamp unto our feet. And that's the message I have for everyone, including whoever heard me just now. God loves you. That's all I have to say. You don't have to change religions. You have to have a change of heart. heart. And only the divine intervention of the supernatural Lord Jesus Christ, who is now in fellowship with the Father in his glorified state, can do it. First, we go to the way, and in the way, we enter the throne room of God who becomes our Father. That's, That's right. it.